Hello to everyone, to all our attendees. So this is Valentina Scopio from the Carbon Services and Industrial Relations Office. And welcome again to our new series of Connecting the Dots webinar with our alumni as a guest. So today we have the pleasure to have Michael Brack, who is the Wow Concept Marketplace Business Developer at X Carthage, and uh, will be interviewed by Caterina Lunghi, who is a teacher and a journalist. So, uh, Michael Brack, our alumna, uh, has attended in the past the Master Course in Fashion Management and graduated in Domus Academy eight years uh, ago, and now is here to uh, explain and to share with you guys uh, his experience in Domus Academy as well as his professional career. So thank you so much for joining. Enjoy the webinar. And I would like to give, leave the word to Caterina Lunghi and then to our alumni as a guest. Enjoy it. And if you have any kind of questions, please, at the end of the webinar, uh, be free to write them in the chat so Michael can uh, read them and answer with me and Caterina. Enjoy it. Grazie, Valentina. Ciao, thank Michael. You. Hey, Caterina, how are you? Michael, you can call me Kate very often. Kate, we Michael, know since eight years ago, I think. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, you were at Domus Academy in uh, 2014, right? Yeah, that's right. And you uh, attending the master in fashion management. In fan fashion management, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, Michael, let's start uh, from uh, today. You are okay. connecting from Madrid, right? Yes, I'm in Madrid right now. From your office uh, at WOW building uh, on La Gran Via, correct? Yeah, exactly. So the WOW concept store, the physical store is in Gran Via 18, and it's the building that we have right behind me. We are, I'm currently at the offices that is in Gran Via 16, so the building next to it. So tell, tell us uh, what uh, you do in Madrid, what is WOW? Because you mentioned concept store, but what is about and what is your role? Okay, so WOW Concept is a new retail business that it was born, um, well, the idea was born like a year and a half ago, but uh, we have been really working on it since a year ago. Um, I joined the company in September last year um, and I am business developer. So I work with the head of marketplaces as I come from Parfetch, that uh, we'll go that into further detail after after well concept. Um, the past years I have gained experience in marketplaces, um, so I'm working in this team right now. Uh, and well was born with the idea to revolutionize uh, retail, the the concept of retail. Um, it sounds a bit like a cliche, but of course uh, we all know that COVID changed a lot of things, and into the market these days. Um, we have realized that the physical stores are now in need of a digital space and the ones in digital space has realized that um, customers are also looking for physical stores. So um, con uh, well concept is born from the idea of um, creating a space that is both phys physical and, uh, and digital from the very beginning. Um, and we are focusing also on the experience that customers are gonna have in our stores and in our marketplace. But Michael, do you offer uh, consultancy services uh, to brands or WOW is a No, 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 we're gonna have, WOW, it's, 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 it's a store and a marketplace and we have different uh, brands that are gonna sell through us. Uh, as you can see, the, it's a eight story building. It's, it was originally the Hotel Roma here in, 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 in Madrid. That's why we have the, the, the walls in the Romulo and Romulo in the in the top of the building, <laughs> um, and on the first floor we have uh, beauty, and we have uh, also on the other floors technology, beauty, home, uh, fashion, of course, and then the last two floors we have restaurants. So it's a multi-brand store, right? It's a multi-brand store. Yes, exactly. And then... that is focused on on digital uh, brands that want wanted to have a retail space, a physical space cool so um, this is the first yeah. ever store and maybe then you are uh, opening uh, other uh, touch point in other uh... Ex yes exactly we, we we are opening actually this saturday so we are running it's been crazy days this 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 past few weeks uh we're opening next saturday in madrid and the idea is to keep growing and to open at least 10 more stores around europe 
and so we'll that's why my you, you are so busy because it was quite tough to <laughs> catch you yes. right because you are under pressure for the yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it's been crazy yeah yeah because i mean of course when you think about selling on a on a on a marketplace on a retail store for us today um it might seem natural and normal but when you think about what is behind it i mean that all systems connect and that everything that you have on your phone and on the on the cashiers in the in the store and then on the marketplace that everything is integrated at the very at the same time it, it's quite a challenge and michael if we have uh, some uh, students some attendees connecting from madrid maybe you can invite them uh... Absolutely, office. absolutely. Remember, Grandia 18, which is, uh, well, Grandia is the second busiest uh, street in, in, in all Europe. So I'm pretty sure that everybody will go through it if they come to Madrid. And uh, Michael, before uh, WOW, let's say that I think you gained a lot of experience in uh, retail, uh, above all digital, uh, at Farfetch, right? What is Farfetch and what did you do there? Uh, based in Portugal? Sure, yeah. I, I, I worked for three, almost three years at Farfetch in Porto, in Portugal. Farfetch, for those of you who do not know, is the, the platform or the main platform these days for uh, fashion and luxury. Um, Farfetch has, has grown. It, it, it has been, I mean, it was founded 12 years ago and has grown immensely. It's one of the first unicorns uh, in Portugal. Um, the founder, Jose Neves, and the C-levels, They are in London, but uh, Farfetch has offices in, in Portugal, this, the United States, Dubai, Hong Kong, the main cities in, and the main countries around the world. Um, but 60% of, of, of the workers are uh, in Portugal, mainly operations, commercial, uh, logistics. And, and then the picture that we're, we're seeing, that's the production center where, where they take all the pictures that they sell through the through Farfetch, the marketplace. I'm sure that uh, every one of us uh in life uh, jump into farfetch online <laughs> or, at one point on another i hope so yes yeah right it might be to look for salloran outfit uh, nike of white uh, and if like you want luxury you go to farfetch i hope so yeah because it's an amazing place and 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 well farfetch and i think it's something very very interesting especially for the ones that want to join the Almost academy and, and who are interested in fashion business Um, is that the, the main idea of Farfetch and how it was born is that um, they wanted to connect all those multi-brand luxury stores around the world, especially concentrated in Italy and in France and, and, and here in Europe, to the world. So I don't know, if you go to a very small uh, town or, or village in the middle of Tuscany that you think there, there is nothing there, you're always going to find a beautiful multi-store luxury that they, they sell uh, San Loran or they sell Valentino, they carry everything in, 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 in the very small. But the thing is that for them to reach, I don't know, a client in South America or in Australia or somewhere, it, it's quite difficult. The logistics and the operational side is very, very hard. So that's how Farfetch idea was born because um, they wanted to connect those small um, boutiques that have a very interesting product with clients around the world. So yeah, Farfetch connects them to, to clients. Michael, Farfetch means... Uh... To catch from the far. Uh, cool. Exactly. Yeah, it's very, it's a, it's a very interesting company. I, I, I loved working for them, to be honest. Yeah, and Michael, in uh, it was uh, two years ago, uh, the year uh, of the acquisition of New Guards Group. Yeah, that's right. The New Guards Group, which uh, for those of you who do not know, uh, it's a conglomerate that is growing a lot in the past years. It's, it, it, it's from Italy. And they carry brands like uh, Marcelo Boulon. Uh, of course, the most famous one is uh, Off White. Yeah, exactly. So it's composed uh, around, I think, six stories or seven brands. Um, and it's now part of the Farfetch portfolio. Yeah, yeah. They, they own, uh, let's say, Farfetch owns uh, also Palm Angels, uh, Alanui. The right of Palm Angels, yes, exactly. They acquired Ambush from Japan. Uh, Uh, last year, uh, so it, I yeah. would say that uh, Newgard Group uh, is the group that uh, has been defining uh, fashion uh, in the last five years. Yeah, right. absolutely, and, and, and I think what it's important is that it's one of the only big conglomerates, I mean, one of the main conglomerates in, in, in Italy, because the big ones are in France, 
LVMH and Chiaringa and, and then Richmond in Switzerland. But in, in Italy, we don't have, I mean, there are not that many. So I think NGG is becoming that big conglomerate for fashion luxury. Michael, here we have a picture of the headquarters of Luxottica in Italy, right, in Belluno. <clears throat> that you visited the headquarters when you were working for Farchet. So why, why did you go there? Uh, you, you are quite proud, right? Of, uh, yes, no, I loved it. I loved it because it was an why? amazing experience. I joined Farchet as key success manager, uh, key partner success manager. So I was working, I mean, when we have the account managers that are in charge of all the commercial and financial part of the of the brands that and, and boutiques that sell through Farfetch. And then there is a operational part that is in charge of everything that is not, that's controlling stocks and speed of sending and like all the operational side. So I was working with uh, the operational side and one of my accounts was Upsotica Group, which I, I loved it because they're an amazing company. Um, and they invited me to their operational center in Belluno in the north of Italy. So I went there and this is the, the picture I took, as you can see the, the, the big glasses and the operational center behind it. It was November, so it was starting to, to snow um, and they, they, they were amazing. They took me to the president office and, and, and I was able to see all the process and how they design and they create all the glasses for Raven for all the clients that they have. Yeah, because, oh, sorry, I forgot to explain what uh, Luxottica is. Is a, right. let's say a big uh, company that uh, produces uh, glasses and sunglasses uh, for the majority of the luxury and fashion yes. brands. And they, they are the owners of uh, Raven and Bow. Cool. I know that you are very proud because uh, you went to the Del Vecchio, Leonardo Del Vecchio office. Leonardo Del Vecchio is quite a. Uh, Let's say the, the a big name in Italy, Italy, yes. <laughs> Italy, right? Yeah, yeah, no, I'm a part of that. It, 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 it's an amazing place to go and to, to understand how the entire process and production process of classes is. I have yeah. never been there. Michael, you have to go. so we have some uh, photos from your Instagram account. It was, uh, <laughs> as we said, uh, 2014. Yes, this is uh, from the final uh, workshop that we made. Uh, this is my, these are all my partners in crime. <laughs> these were not only my, my partners during the workshop, but also really good friends. Um, this day was the, the last workshop. So after this one, we didn't have any more lessons or workshops. We, we were going on holidays. And after that, we were all starting our internships. So this was like the farewell from, from from the regular first, first part of the of the course. Yeah, um, I, I, I see Andrea and also Andrea Maria. from Mexico, yes. Maria exactly. Is, Maria is, uh, yeah, exactly. She was our program lead. Then we have Annie, that is the one in the middle. She has a Louis Vuitton t-shirt, which is funny because now she works for Louis Vuitton in Germany. <laughs> um, and then we have Canine and Gaia from Italy and from Lebanon. So it's, it's a very multicultural program, which is very interesting. Yeah, I do remember them because Michael, Maria was your program leader, but yes. uh, I gave a, a few lectures about communication and events. Uh, we, we also manage a, a workshop together. So lovely days. Absolutely. I love them. The master in fashion management and the you, as uh, we always do, uh, had the four workshops with the yes. companies and the real task, like real life uh, working. So the first one, you did a workshop with Stone Island, which is a, a sportwear brand, even more than sportwear. What did you do with the Stone Island? I, I don't remember. Uh, no, okay, so how it works is that when you go to Domus Academy, what you have is that um, you have the first courses around uh, fashion, so you go through fashion history, general uh, understanding how the fashion system works, and then you have four different uh, workshop modules. On each of them, you're going to see different types of, um, how do you say that, um, like... Um, different types of business around fashion. So Sorry, Mike, for Michael, example, can you see me? That I see my room, uh, it's getting very dark. Yes, a little bit, but no That's worries. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's okay. 
you are so there are so much light from you you Gran Via and I'm very dark. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's Madrid, it's always sunny. <laughs> Sorry. So. No, it's okay. Um, so with the Stone Island, we worked uh, in our workshop uh, developing all the communications and strategy for uh, launching Stone Island in Los Angeles. They were about to open their first um, store in LA. So they, 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 they came, uh, the owner actually, with, with uh, his wife. At that point, they owned the entire company because I, I, I think I it was recently the bought. Carlo Rivetti. Carlo Rivetti, exactly. And he and went Michael, with his wife. They were very, very nice. The latest news, uh, latest, it was last year when last year, uh, yeah. Moncler acquired the yeah. island. Exactly. When, when we did the workshop, uh, they had full control of the company. So he was the 100% the, the owner. Right now, it's part of Moncler, as you were saying. Um, so what we did was... Um, develop uh, this strategy for, for, for communicating the, the Stone Island launch in, in, in Los Angeles. This is a brand that is very, very interesting. I know it's very in the heart of uh, Italians and it had quite an impact many years ago in the, in the British clients. Michael, now memories really? came to my mind and I do remember that you guys did a lot of research on uh, music and pop music uh, connection, right? Mm -hmm. That some uh, uh, also rappers uh, from the US, they do love and uh, wear Stone Island. So the workshop was uh, about the opening of uh, the store. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. I mean, Stone Island, it's, it's a brand that is founded in, in, in the streetwear, but it, it, they use materials that are very luxurious, very technological. They, they really put effort into research and development. So that's why the, the prices are high, but the quality is absolutely amazing. Um, so what, what many of, uh, of, of us during the workshop we were trying to, to do was to combine the hype and the surf style life, uh, lifestyle of LA with the, with the launch of a brand that it was not very well known at that point uh, in the States. Um, so it was a very interesting and, and challenging um, workshop, but it was really cool is that we were able to present these ideas directly to the owner. Uh, and he gave us feedback of what he thought and, and maybe the ideas that he, he had around what we were presenting. So that's something that is very valuable for us. And uh, guys, if uh, someone of you is uh, in Milano, you are coming to Milano, uh, there are two stores in town. One is in Corso in Venezia. Buenos Aires, I think. Corso Venezia. No, Corso right. Venezia, and there is a, a kind of brand new store in uh, Corso Matteotti, in the city center. Uh, Both of them. Yeah. And I suggest uh, visiting because of the the clothes in the pieces themselves, but also the the setup, the visual merchandising, the architecture of their yeah, and, 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 and they also usually have really good installations during Settimana del Mobile. Correct, with the neon art. Yes, yes, yes. So it's a very, I mean, I will recommend you to go and see it. And usually you can see Mr. Rivetti there. So it's, it's very fun to talk to him around it. <laughs> Michael, um, another uh, workshop yes. was with the slower. What did you do? What is lower? Yes, slower is uh, as far as I remember because it's it's focused on on, on Italy. It's 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 a Venetian a Venetian uh, from Venezia <laughs> store. Um, it's very traditional for menswear, uh, and we were working on developing capsule collections with them. So yeah. how will be the business side of the, of developing a capsule collection? Yeah, they are a, a long. Uh... A long term partner of Domus Academy. They still have yes. the workshop going on. And the, the name itself means a lot, right? The philosophy is very well done. And yes, uh, it's lower. Yeah, exactly. It's the contrary of fast fashion. I think that what, they, what they're trying to do is to do really um, quality materials, something that you can buy and it will last more than just one season. Yeah. Um, and what was interesting, I think, about that workshop is that um, the challenge from the business side of, of, of uh, building an entire capsule collection is not just the design of it. Of course, there is a part of design, but then you have to think of all the business wise on how to how to launch uh, a capsule collection. So that was the, the challenge that we had in that. In that and uh, also, Michael, it's nice that you mentioned that uh... I would say their genius logic that they want to show off is uh, their origins is Venice. 
Città di Venezia yes. that is written down uh, under the, the logo. Under this lower logo, yes, exactly. And uh, Michael, I, I do remember that I was the project leader of this workshop and it was very, very nice. <laughs> yes. Went uh, on, field, on the field trip uh, with Gianfranco Livotto, do you remember, to... Yes, absolutely. The, the factory... Yeah, for use of, yeah, yeah, yeah no. for those of you that are watching, Bonaveri is one of the main mannequins uh, manufacturers in Italy and worldwide. It is very well known in 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 the in the world of mannequins in luxury. If you go to Zara, you're gonna see that all their mannequins and all from the Inditex group are from Bonaveri. Yeah, but uh, also and of course they produce mannequins, also tailor made for Dolce Gabbana, a lot for of everyone, yeah. Gun, Fendi. So Uchi, Valentino, for all the big ones, yes, yes, absolutely. So we had the, the opportunity to go there to really get into, into the factory. Something that I absolutely love about Italy is that these kind of companies are, are usually family owned. So the owner is the, the, the non -no, so you have the, yeah, exactly. You have Mr. Bonaveri, they're the sons, the daughters, and the, the husbands, the wives, because everybody gets married and they become part of the Bonaveri family. <laughs> <laughs> and and the, the the founder who it was I don't know the Bonaveri the first I, I have no idea how many generations there are right now I don't but, remember uh, the name of the grandfather let's say <laughs> yeah exactly the, the grandfather was uh, of course sitting there in the middle of the factory and he showed us everything and all the mannequins it was a really interesting workshop um, and what we did with them was the the launch of their um, uh, not store, but the um, showroom. Sorry, forgot the name. Showroom, thank you. Of the their showroom in Milano, uh, yeah. that I think yeah. is the picture that we have here. Yeah, because they were uh, about to opening uh, their first yeah. showroom in Milano as a hub for international clients, buyer, uh, and exactly. uh, the showroom is still there in Via Morimondo. There is the rooftop for nice parties. <laughs> I went there <laughs> before course. the pandemic, and. Um, I think it was uh, also for me uh, a great uh, discovery of uh, uh, a company and a product that is, uh, let's say, an excellence, but maybe you don't think uh, about the, the mannequin industry as yeah. a great field, right? You don't pay attention to what uh, is the behind the scenes of visual merchandising. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, 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 as you were saying this, I was thinking that something that I think is really important to think about fashion is that fashion is not just about design. Of course, design is, the, is, is one of the most important parts of fashion, but there is an entire world behind it. So you have mannequins, you have technology, you have uh, um, providers of, of um, suppliers of uh, materials. I mean, there is an entire world behind this industry that makes it so interesting. And one of them, a side business, is, for example, mannequins. How do you show the... the the clothes that you are designing, how do you, how, how do you put them into a visual merchandise them that will be interesting for people and, and want actually to buy them? Yeah, and Michael, I remember that uh, a few years later, they provided the, the mannequins um, to Met, the Metropolitan Museum in New York, uh, for uh, the big exhibition about, um, about China organized by Anna Wintour, so they are... Yes, 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 but there is a picture of it, actually. Yeah, and uh, Emma Davidge, who is uh, one of the most famous, uh, let's say, set designers and creative uh, minds in the fashion world, is their creative director. She collaborates with Louis Vuitton, Fendi, Versace for fashion shows uh, and windows. Uh, so I remember that through them, we really discovered an entire world of creativity and um, also made in Italy. Absolutely. I think it has the seal of made in Italy in, in the company's heart, yeah. Last but not least, I, didn't, uh, I, was, uh, I wasn't part of this workshop, Antonioli which is uh, Antonioli, yes. uh, Claudio Antonioli is uh, the founder of uh, his eponymous store uh, not far from school. And also Claudio Antonioli was one of the founder of New Guard okay. Group that we mentioned yes. before. So it's a kind okay, of yeah. uh, 
great man in Milano and in the fashion uh, industry. Okay, so for those of you who do not know, um, Antonioli is one of the most uh, well-known or renowned um, boutiques, multi-brand multi stores boutiques in, in, in Milano. It's very interesting because their aesthetic is very dark, very into Rico wins, but you also see Sakai or maybe, I mean, it's, it's a really well-curated um, boutique. So with this workshop, I think it was one of my favorites. It was uh, fashion buying and uh, usually workshops, we have a client, in this case, Antonio Ali, and then we have an invited teacher that sometimes it was, it was you, Caterina, but in this case, it was Caron. Uh, he owns a boutique store in, in, in Lake Como. No, no, Lake uh, Como, it's Arona. Le Lake Como, yeah. Where? I think Arona. Oh. In Arona, yeah, you're right. One of, one of the lakes in the north, Another yeah, you're lake. right. But they're all very near. <laughs> and then um, it was very, very, very interesting because we were working with them and the, the brief that they gave us to, to work for the workshop, um, it was to find new brands to be sold or to include into the, into the Antonio Alicardo. It was quite challenging because, as I was saying, it's a very... Um, not easy concept what they have. I mean, they manage from Rico Owens, which is very dark, very high, and these days, uh, I don't know, very different from the from the commercial brand. Um, but what I think it was really interesting is that after six years, when I when I started working at Farfetch, um, I saw Caron because he sells through Farfetch, and in one of uh, Farfetch meetings, he was there. So it was, it was for me, it was really, really amazing to be able to, as this webinar is called, connect the dots between what I did in Domus Academy and afterwards in my in my professional life when I was in in in, in Farfetch. Um, and I went there to to tell him, "Hi, I, I, you were my teacher in Domus Academy." He was like, "No way, this is incredible!" And actually, I ended up working with him. Um, he he was part of. of of the boutiques that sells through Farfetch, so it was it was really interesting to see him to see him there and to be able to connect what had happened in, in my past and, and the present. And also, Michael, I think that uh, also we connecting the dots because uh, uh, you, I I'm very fond of Domus Academy, but also I'm a journalist and uh, I'm on the Rizzoli team. Uh, I'm in charge. Of, uh, of developing new books uh, dedicated to fashion, art, and design, and you help me with Farfetch. <laughs> uh, so you are my consultant uh, for some uh, strategies and connections. Yeah, 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 we all help each other once we are <laughs> part of the gang. <laughs> Correct. And uh, Michael, what did you do right after Domus Academy? Which internship uh, did you manage to get? Uh, um, well, I worked with, uh, it, it's a funny story, and I think that for those of you who are part of the, of the Almost Academy, who are going through a, a course right now, or for those of you who are wanting to go, my advice would be to talk to anyone and to look for internships on your own. Of course, Domus Academy is there to help you, but you have to move, you have to do your part. Um, while I was doing the courses, I remember that uh, we had an invited uh, teacher, Jarvis Maki. I don't know if, if, if you know him. Right now, Jarvis is the global head of uh, social media for Luxotica Group. But when, when I met him, um, he was a PR manager for TOTS. So we started discussing after a lesson about joining him for an internship and he actually took me. Unfortunately, it was not possible because of TOTS. They, they started internships in December and by that time I had to already have done my, my internship. But um, at the end, I, I finished with uh, Colombo Villa de la Espiga, which is one of uh, very traditional Milanese uh, brand. They do uh, exotic uh, leather, so mainly accessories in crocodile leather. I know that these days this is uh, quite of a gray area between what is green, what is not green, what should be what is legal. Uh, continue, what is not. No, it's absolutely legal. And, and, and I must say, it's not like they go hunting for crocodiles. I mean, there are farms like they, they grow them and they use the meat for, for, for eating in, in Australia or in different parts. So it, 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 it has a, a regulation, even each piece of, of leather has a tag and everything. I mean, it's super controlled. Um, but of course, we are moving into a 
for free and exotic leather free world. So we'll see how it goes. But it's at the moment, it was really interesting. Um, for me, it was amazing to end up there because my family used to own a, a leather factory. I'm from Colombia. And my dad used to make leather in Colombia. We, we used to sell leather for, for example, for brands like Bali in Switzerland for the shoes. And he, it was really interesting. So I, I grew up with leather into my, my blood and my, my, my house all the time was around uh, leather and, and, and fashion and those kind of things. So for me, doing the internship in, in Colombo was, was really interesting. Also because it's owned by the Samsung Group. Uh, I don't know if you know that, but Samsung, the, the, the electronic producer, they also have a fashion division that is led by the daughter of the owner of Mr. Samsung, I think Mr. Lee. Um, and she, what she's doing right now is that she's buying, well, not right now, but since eight years ago, she's buying small um, companies in Italy and France that have a very big uh, know-how, a very well-established know-how. And she's injecting money and she's bring, I mean, she's growing them from, from, from inside. Uh, and this is one of them. So they have, uh, Colombo has a store in Via de Espiga in Milan, and then in the Ritz Hotel in Paris. Oops, my dog, he's also fine. Your hairy dog. <laughs> <laughs> and Michael, so we can say that Domus Academy was really useful, right? To push you in the right direction. <laughs> Absolutely. I think it was the, I mean, it put me in context and it showed me how, how the fashion world works because when I, I think that, I mean, for those of you who are thinking about joining this university and, and any of the different programs that I have is that, for example, in my case, I'm not a designer, but I love fashion. So for me, it was a little bit like, okay, where is, where can I find a space inside fashion or in the luxury these, these, these sort of uh, masters where you have fashion management that it's uh, general terms of fashion, how the industry works, it gives you a light on how the different scopes that you have available for you and then you can start searching and looking for the ones that it, it better fits on what you have done or what your interests are. Um, so it was very enlightening for me to, to be part of, uh, of this program. Michael, I never asked you, how did you find out about Domus Academy from Bogota? Um, it's an interesting story because um, I found out because I was looking for a master's degree that I wanted to do. Uh, I wanted to do one that it wouldn't be in English. I wanted to learn a third uh, language. So um, I started asking some of my friends and I had some friends in Colombia that had been living for since the 80s in Milano and they worked for uh, Giorgio Armani. Uh, and they actually went to the Homs Academy in the 80s when it was run by Gianfranco Ferre. Uh, so it was very interesting because I was talking to them and told me, no, we went to the Homs Academy, it was Gianfranco Ferre. When we graduated, we started working with, uh, with, uh, with, with him. Uh, when he died, then they moved to work with Giorgio Armani. And, and now one of my friends, he's the, one of the heads of uh, Armani Home. He has been with Armani for 20 years and, and they were the ones that told me about uh, the Homs Academy. That's so why you I decided there. to attend the Homs Academy, even if it was in English? It was in English, yes. Well, some lessons are in Italian. Okay, so <laughs> no, yeah. yeah, but living, I mean, living, living in Italy. It, it, well, these days now I work in, I, I speak Italian because of that. So. I know, I know. We usually speak in Italian. Usually we speak in Italian, and afterwards, to be honest, in Farfetch, I was working with the Italian market. So in Farfetch, during my in my time in Farfetch, I worked in Italian almost all the time. So I think that also when you visited the Luxottica. The fact that you are able to speak Italian was uh, a kind of... Uh, yeah, it was event. crucial. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. And Michael, here we have uh, some uh, photos. Uh, I can see Naila, that now she works in Domus Academy. And maybe... Uh, Lula, she, uh, yeah, no, no. This, I think this, these are all my, my very good friends from, from Domus Academy. The first one, we, we took that picture in Florence when we went to PT Uomo, because Domus also... All, and give you the opportunity of, of going to a special um, um how do you events, say that? Um, events at first exactly so we went to pt uomo in, in florence or the other one is the day we graduated uh and a few months after i went back to milano like a year after and i i i saw uh, lula there now she works with uh, with the academy and she has her own company that's called uh, Fort, uh, Fortlou, 
and uh, well, I think it's very interesting to see how everyone is now working on on You're things related to fashion. All of them. Annie is getting married in May, and we're going to Germany for her wedding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. And Andrea, Andrea is visiting, visiting me this week from Milano, so she's staying in my house these days. <laughs> so yes, definitely. A call to Andrea. <laughs> Absolutely, I will tell her. Yeah, yeah. And, and Lula, as I said, she's from Lebanon, half Lebanese, half Italian, but she married an Italian guy, so she's now in, in Milano. And she founded an amazing furniture company that is called Corretto Lou. Ah, I invite you to... With Corretto Lu. So what she does is that she looks around Italy for, for uh, antique pieces of furniture, okay. very well curated. And then she stores them. And then she opens twice a year a pop-up store in, in, yeah, in yeah. Beirut. And they take all of them and, and they, she yes. sells them there. And Michael, it's an she incredible also place. works at Domus Academy because I met her uh, last week. She has her own de desk. I think she's a coordinator. Or maybe Valentina, what, Naila, what does Naila do at Domus? Now she, she's in charge of the Domus Academy students that are enrolled in the double award. So she oh. is a tutor, a mentor yeah. for these uh, students. Yes. Yeah, yeah, because she's the, incredible. Yeah, and she's yes. one of the best dressed persons that I have ever met in my life. Yeah, she's very stylish. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. And also, Valentina, I think we can say that uh, it might happen that the uh, former student then, then uh, works at Domus Academy. Yes, it could be. So sometimes we also remember our valid and talented students and maybe we can engage them for some project leadership or some, as a project assistant in a workshop. So we, we remember the valid the talent, uh, the talent students, yes. Yeah, step-by-step. So step, uh, steps, step it can yes. Be. So if we are organizing a workshop, maybe in fashion or in luxury or in fashion brand management, and maybe we, we and the faculty uh, we will think about uh, students, uh, former students that uh, uh, did Domus Academy and is perfect for this role to, to follow the students, the new students, of course. So it's yeah. a circle, no? It's a circle. Yes, absolutely. You can, invi you can invite me if you do a marketplace. Workshop. Why not? Uh, why not? <laughs> uh, we are open. Absolutely. Why not? Uh, <laughs> Michael. Did you have any nightmares uh, while you were studying at Domus Academy? Some pressure for some final presentation? Uh... <laughs> um, well, not nightmares, but of course there is pressure on, on trying to do your best and to, to excel on what you wanted to do. I think the biggest challenge is to, to really be able to communicate and to, to transform your ideas into, into something tangible because so many times we have many different ideas and we can be very creative, um, especially if you are eating well and drinking well like you do in Italy. Um, but when you want to make all those ideas something tangible, I think that that's the real challenge. And I think that's, that's where you might find pressure. And uh, sweet uh, and forgettable memories and moments. <laughs> Many, 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 many. I, uh, many. I think that, uh, no, I think that meeting people from around the world was, uh, was an amazing opportunity. I love to, to be able to, to meet people, to make new friends, uh, to discuss about different cultures. Uh, and of course, the experience of, of living uh, abroad, it's amazing. Falling in love, eating, traveling, <laughs> uh, making friends that last forever, connection for business. I think it's, it's, it's one of the best things that you could ever do in your life. No, 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 I would just uh, say that if, if you are thinking about joining Domus Academy, uh, I would advise you to absolutely do it. I think it's an amazing opportunity to really um, go out uh, of your comfort zone wherever you are and just uh, being pushed into think outside of the box and to really experience um, what is to live in a city like Milano. I, I absolutely adore Milan. Uh, I think it's, and if you like fashion and luxury, it's the best city where you can be. Um, and you're gonna find amazing people. I, I met really good friends, not only with uh, fellow students, but also with uh, teacher colleagues. I mean, for example, Katerina, we have been talking since eight years ago. And we, I mean, it, it, it's, it's incredible um, the people you get to know and the experience of going abroad. For those of you who are going, I recommend you learn Italian. 
not just because it's the most beautiful language there is, but also because it's going to be quite useful for you if you want to work in, in Italy. Um, Italians speak the most wonderful language, so not all of them speak English. <laughs> so learn Italian. It's my, my, my number one uh, advice. And then don't wait for things to come to you. Go speak to everyone that you can and, and look for what you want outside because nothing is going to find you. You need to go and find it. <laughs> exactly. Thank you so much, uh, Michael. And thank you also to you, Caterina. Grazie, Michael. Hope to see you soon uh, in Milano. Milan. In Como. Come and visit me. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Michael, finger crossed for Saturday. Thank you very much. I really hope it's gonna be it's gonna be amazing. Uh, go ahead and follow us on Instagram. And if you are ever in Madrid, please stop by Grandia 18. Okay. <laughs> Grazie. See Grazie. you soon. See you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you so You're much to all guys so for attending this webinar. I hope you enjoy it and have a nice evening to all. Thank you so much again. See you soon.